everyone. If you're feeling a little bit observant today, you might have noticed I'm not Godless Scranium. Instead, my name is Rachel Oates, and a huge thank you to Godless Cranium for giving me this little guest spot on his channel while he's away. I talk a little bit about atheism over on my channel. It's something I've started doing and something I'm doing a lot more often because I just enjoy it and I enjoy the conversation. Today I'm here to tell you a little bit about my personal story as to how and why I became an atheist. It's a little bit different from some people's, I think, because it started when I was very, very young. I was never very religious for a long period of time. I've always kind of felt like I was sceptical. But we'll start at the beginning and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Hopefully it'll start a bit of a conversation and we can hear a lot from you guys about how you became atheists and what led you to those conclusions and things like that. And I just thought it would be great to share my story, my experiences, and it might help people out if they're kind of questioning their beliefs at all. So to start things off, I actually went to a Church of England school for seven years, from the ages of about four to eleven. So it was an infant school and a junior school here in the UK. I was based up in South Yorkshire in this tiny, tiny little market town. We actually had religion classes every week where we learned a lot about Bible stories and I remember one of my favourite things to do was actually to do these kind of retellings of the stories and we'd illustrate the pictures ourselves and that kind of thing and I absolutely loved it. I had so much fun with it. We also had these um, sort of illustrated children's Bibles in all the classrooms and these were like big books for like five, six year olds to be reading. I'm talking like kind of this thick. They were long and I read that book cover to cover because I loved the stories. And that was the thing, because I was really into reading even from a young age. So I think that's what kind of attracted me to it. It was that I liked the storytelling aspect and I liked the characters and things like that. But in my head, I don't think it quite kind of clicked that this was supposed to be fact. But all that said, we had a vicar who came in every week to kind of I guess sort of preached to us. It started off with a really lovely old man called Father George. Eventually he retired and it got taken over by a guy called Father David who for some reason always creeped me out. Don't know why, he's probably a lovely guy, he's still there as the vicar now, but I just didn't like him for some reason. I remember I never enjoyed those assemblies for some reason. I don't know why because like I say, I loved reading and writing the stories in the RE classes but I hated this kind of weird preaching and him reading all these like kind of really archaic quotes from the real Bible. And yeah, it just, I don't know, it didn't feel right to me. I always used to get such a grump on in those assemblies. I was so moody. So that was school. Um, at home it was a little bit different because my parents definitely call themselves Christians. Or at least my mum definitely does. She's quite sort of adamant about that. Um, I don't really know much about what my dad thinks, but all that said, they were never kind of like actively worshipping Christians, they're still not now. They don't like go to church or anything, despite literally living on the same street as one. They never like actively encouraged us to pray or anything like that as kids. I, I guess I was always kind of influenced that being a Christian was the right thing to be labelled. Um, and I guess I didn't really know that you could be an atheist until I was maybe six or seven, may maybe eight, something like that. And my sister's a lot older than me, she's 14 years older than me. And when I was a kid she used to always like bring me like bits of makeup and stuff to play around with in her bedroom. So while she'd be getting ready to uh, like go out with her friends on like, like a proper night out to the pub or whatever, I'd sit on her bedroom floor and I'd sit in front of the mirror and play with makeup and just kind of like have fun. And I remember we were doing that one day and she literally just turned and I think we were talking about school or something. And she just turned to me really casually and said, oh so do you believe in God then? Up until that point, I guess I'd never really thought about it, I'd never really questioned it. Because um, that's that's not something we were ever taught to question. That's not something we were ever sort of taught could be questioned. It was really weird because up until that point I'd kind of taken the stories in the Bible as stories, but also taken the things that the vicar was saying as fact, because he was a vicar and he, he knew this stuff. And I never quite equated them to being the same thing. And I never really thought about, oh, so are these stories fact? And it was weird because like in that moment I kind of started to put it all together and think about it. And I literally had these really vivid memories of sitting there. And I was going through all this stuff that I'd read in the children's bible. And I was like, well, hang on a minute. This doesn't make sense because 
for one thing, there's no dinosaurs in the Bible. And I was going through a stage where I was obsessed with dinosaurs, I had all these dinosaur books and I absolutely loved it. Um, and I started to like go through all this stuff, and I was a bit of a geeky kid as well, so I had a lot of books on rocks and minerals and all that stuff. And, and I wanted to be an astronaut as well, that's another thing, so I'd read a lot about space and I knew the basics of the idea of the Big Bang. And again, I'd never really put it together until that moment that this idea of God creating the universe or the world and the Big Bang, I'd never really kind of equated it that they were two contradicting theories. And somehow I was like, well, there's no dinosaurs in the Bible. There's all this, like, other stuff that just doesn't really add up. And I've never really, like, had any evidence myself that God exists. And it just kind of, like, popped into my head. I was like, well, if dinosaurs are missing, what else are they missing? And, you know, I was eight years old. I had no kind of, like, complex scientific knowledge. I had no real knowledge of what the actual Bible was about. I only knew what the children's Bible kind of said. But with, like, all of this, my brain just started questioning things and kind of things weren't quite fitting together and suddenly I was like I don't think I do and it just kind of in that moment felt right so suddenly like the bible wasn't fact anymore and I started to wonder kind of like what else adults had I guess sort of lied about and I started questioning everything the vicar said in like assemblies and stuff the point that I'm getting at here is that on the one hand, I got this whole new respect for my sister to like opening me up to this idea of questioning things and not just taking them as fact and trying to look for my own evidence. Um, and I got this kind of bitterness towards a lot of adults who kind of tried to push religion onto me. Um, and I, I definitely felt a little bit of bitterness towards Christianity in particular for lying to me. Because that, that's how I felt. I felt like they'd been lying to me for these first few years. Then I got older and I went to secondary school. So at this point I'm like 12 years old. And we started to have RE lessons where we learnt not only about Christianity, but we learnt about other religions as well. And that's when it all just started to feel silly to me that I'd ever thought that maybe I could believe in any of that. Because with so many different stories out there and so many different religions, why should one be true and not the others? If that was the case, then surely they were just all stories. When I was about 13 and in year 8, we got asked to write this essay in RE about what we thought God was. And it was one of those things where we were meant to write about like, oh, well, Christians believe this, and um, Jews believe this, Muslims believe this, and so on. Um, but at the end of it, we had to come to our own con conclusions and say what we thought God was. And I remember um, a lot of people wrote about this idea of like a sort of spirit or unknown being who created the universe and gave us morals and all this kind of thing but I wrote about how God seems to be this kind of like man-made kind of idea to comfort people in times when they're struggling and explain the things that we don't quite have the answers to yet and ultimately to me it like that was when I really started thinking about kind of why we have religions and a lot of it seemed to me to be quite sort of like archaic in that you know hundreds of years ago religion and the idea of god and spirituality and stuff was used to give answers to the stuff that we didn't quite have scientific explanations for yet and then today you know it seems to be kind of like more of a comfort thing and a and I, I guess a kind of like emotional support kind of thing but then through thinking like that i was like well if I don't need answers to these unknown questions from a god anymore because I have science, I don't need him for that. And if I can get all my emotional support from me, from my family, from my friends, I don't need god for that either. And that was the moment when I started to kind of label myself an atheist because I finally understood that there was a word for how I was feeling and how I thought about religion. This, this was all fine for a while. And it was just kind of, it was never an issue, it was never brought up, no one ever questioned it. Until I was about maybe 16 or 17 and it was time for a census. And obviously my mum just like filled it out for our house and stuff like that. And I just kind of asked her one day, I was like, what did you put down for my religion? And she was like, oh, Christian of course, or Church of England or whatever. I was like, can you, can you change that to atheist please? And my mum got so kind of mad at me. She, it was almost like she was kind of shocked 
shocked and almost a little bit ashamed. It was like being an atheist was something to be ashamed of. She was like, oh no, no, we can't do that. And it was weird because it was like almost like being a Christian was the proper thing to do. And if people knew her daughter was an atheist, it's like, ooh, well, they're just troublemakers, aren't they? I brought it up at school one day and I just kind of said in passing, I was like, yeah, so my mum my mom kind of doesn't want me to be an atheist and she won't mark me as an atheist on the census. And she was like, well, you're not an atheist. I was like, yes, I am. And she was like, no, no, you were christened, weren't you? I was like, yeah, when I was like six months old, I had no choice in it. And she was like, oh no, that, that means you're a Christian for life, you can't change it, you're a Christian. I was like, but I don't believe in God. I don't think there's a God. I don't believe anything in the Bible is fact. I'm not a Christian. And she's like, no, no you are. And it was just, it was a really kind of bizarre thing because for me, religion had always been something that I'd kind of questioned from this really young age. And I didn't quite realize until that point how some people saw religion in a completely different way to me. Like some people thought it was like so set in all these rules and traditions and some people saw it as something to be proud of and some people saw it as like something you couldn't decide for yourself you were just born into a religion and you had to stay that religion and that was a really kind of like weird turning point for me then again as I got older I kind of started to focus more on learning about science and things like that in my first year of uni I studied biomed before I just changed course because it wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. And around that time as well I started actually looking into the Bible itself and reading parts of the Bible. Like I still haven't read it cover to cover because like if you tried to read that thing it's dull as hell. Um, but I've read bits of it and like large chunks of it and I started to just kind of like realise how illogical a lot of it was, how many inconsistencies there were, and also just how horrific parts of it are. And it kind of worried me a little bit that people like my parents, would, who, who are good people, that they would want to be associated with a book like the Bible. Um, and it just kind of confused me a little bit how people can kind of like talk about love and kindness and looking after each other and base that all on a book which started out so full of hate at times. That was just something that really didn't make a lot of sense to me. And how anyone can kind of look at passages of hate and sexism and homophobia and all these other things and kind of find something positive out of it just didn't really make sense to me. And so it was all these things that kind of just made me feel angry at religion for a very long time. Now I'm definitely at a point in my life where I'm not so angry at it anymore because I do see how religion can be good for some people and I do see how some people can get really wonderful things out of it like emotional support and a sense of belonging and being in community and I do respect that about it but at the same time I don't need to get that from religion and I don't think religion makes rational or logical sense, therefore I don't need it. It's difficult because I see how great religion can be for my own family, like my brother and sister-in-law, um, and I see how much they kind of love it and what a big part of their lives it is, and I love that it makes them so happy, but at the same time I find it really hard to kind of just pretend to be ignorant of all the bad stuff and the irrational stuff and the hateful stuff that's in the Bible and so many other holy books. I've recently started looking um, into the Quran and reading a few passages from there and again I'm just as kind of shocked by some of the horrible things I'm reading. So it's difficult because I wouldn't say that I'm just like anti-religion in general but I am definitely against the bits that promote kind of such negativity and hatefulness and the bits that kind of just take away free will and also the bits that kind of take away the kind of power we have over ourselves. There's a lot of stuff in a lot of holy texts about kind of blindly following God or some kind of being like that. There's a lot of stuff about not questioning the unknown. There's a lot of stuff about how 
it's horrible and arrogant and selfish to want to kind of like take control of your own life and not just leave it in God's hands. And that's all of the stuff that I don't like because I'm a big believer that we should be good people and we should help other people and that's what I want to do and I want to lead a good life but I want to have control over my life myself and I think other people should do that as well. This is getting really long, this is getting really rambly. I just kind of want to end this and wrap this up by saying that I want to be a good person, I want to lead a good life and help people and I don't want to do that by following some unbelievable text full of hatred or lacking logic or rationality or anything like that and that's why I'm an atheist. But that's just my long rambling story, I would love to hear from everyone else, let me know what happened to you to make you an atheist or make you question, or even the opposite, what makes you believe in a god or turn to religion. Um, I think hearing everyone's stories is really amazing. I think questioning our own beliefs and understanding why we personally believe things or think the way we do is a really really important thing and it's only going to improve who we are as people. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Huge, huge thank you again to Godless Cranium for this little guest spot here on his channel. Go check out the rest of his videos because he is seriously awesome. Um, but for now, my name is Rachel Oates. You can probably find my channel in the description below if you want to. Um, otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it.